Hey guys, let's look at some more reforged models, shall we? Today I'm going to look at the uh, Nagas and Neutrals. So we're starting with uh, the Nagas up here. Uh, this is the Coatl. Um, overall, I think the Naga units look great. Um, they just look scaly and slimy and exactly the way that they should. Um, these are the Murgles. There's some other... Uh, I realize now I should have put these with the other Murlocs so we could um, look at them side by side, but I guess I can move them later. Anyway, yeah, Murgles and Murlocs uh, look pretty good. Uh, I think that they look... They're a good cross between the Warcraft 3 Murlocs and the World of Warcraft Murlocs. I, I kind of don't think that they look like either exactly. They kind of look in between, so that's kind of interesting. Um, here are, let's see, oh, yeah, yeah, this is a, this is the normal siren, kind of creepy and snaky, um, and then this one is a summoner from that level where Illidan's trying to, now that I think about it, I don't know why they're called summoners, because they're trying to, like, channel the power of the Eye of Sargeras, not summon anything per se, but anyway, they're based on the same model, uh, this one's got a much bigger thin crown in the back um, and a different spear and stuff but yeah cool to have two different oh and she's got fins on the side too this is the snapdragon pretty good overall overall I think that they did a pretty good pretty good justice with all the Naga units this is the Myrmidon and the Royal Guard I love the Royal Guard uh, before he was just kind of a different color but now he looks way different and I don't know I, I'm not sure how much I like the player colors being on the fin um, see this one looks better to me and it's because the player colors on his shoulders like it was in the old one like that orange just seems to go with his teal skin and so I don't know uh, I kind of have a similar issue with the um, dragons which I'll show later all right this is the Naga sea witch as you'll see her on melee maps and then this is Lady Vaj I think she looks a lot different. Her face just does not look the same. Uh, I think that they might have lost some detail in making her have a more realistic face. Doesn't quite look like Lady Vosh as I remember her from the other one, but, you know, I think it's pretty good. Oh, I just realized she's holding a sword in one hand. Oh yeah, and then a bow, and it's pretty cool. I, I don't think that this is the case, but I'd love if Warcraft 3 had melee and ranged animations for both for types of units because you know I mean it's just weird to see bowmen like um, shooting arrows like point blank you know it'd, it'd be cool if like within a certain range they could attack with a melee weapon or something uh, and then here's some of the buildings actually I think I did all the buildings because they all look really interesting um, this is the altar of the depths, which looks really cool. That's a kind of a lifelike naga there. Uh, fun fact: statues in olden times used to be painted, so that's actually kind of cool that they did that. Uh, we often see s statues just you know blank stone, but they were actually painted, kind of like this in the past. That's a coral bed. Uh, this is the awesome shrine of Ajara, which is pretty sweet. I also like the water. I think the water looks really good on Reforged. This one's pretty sweet. The spawning grounds always reminds me of the spawning pool on uh, StarCraft for the Zerg, which is kind of funny. And the Temple of Tides. I can't remember which which is which, if this is the Town Hall or that is. I can't remember, but either way, they both look really good. Actually, maybe is that an upgraded ver Whatever. Uh, and then this is the Tidal Guardian. Um, you can kind of see on these animations how he looks. He looks pretty cool looks definitely more I guess I don't really know how to explain how he looks like less like a I actually less boxy I think that's what it comes out to be he just looks more like a creature so that's pretty good uh, and then here's some just random neutral there's a lot on this map as, as you'll see and so um, I just kind of went and looked for every little neutral thing this here's a Nerubian Ner ziggurat from Northrend Ooh, I just noticed the spider eggs around them. Gross. Uh, here are the tents. I don't really like the, what they did with the tents, because before, 
I mean, I like how they're different, but before they had a tent in both, like facing different directions, and now it's kind of weird that they have to both face that direction. I mean, I guess you can always change, like just do a doodad and face them, but I don't know, it looks kind of weird. Uh, here are some null huts, some torrent tents, uh, furbolg huts, harpy nest, ice troll huts. The snow looks really good on that one. Centaur tents. What else? Forest troll huts. Yeah, and more centaur huts. So that's pretty much the neutral buildings and stuff. Let's go down to the next row. So I don't skip any this time. Here we have the critters. Uh, the critters all look so, so much better. It's pretty funny, actually, how much better they look. Because the critters were so small in the original Warcraft 3 that they had to be just void of any detail at all. And so it's kind of cool. Like, these will actually be useful if you want to blow them up to bigger size and make them into an actual enemy or something. They just look so much better. Especially the frog. <laughs> the frog was like a little square with like vague <laughs> eyes and hands and stuff and that looks like a really good frog um, and it hops and stuff so yeah this is a skink that looks a little too epic for a critter I love its frills and stuff though oh that's a goblin landmine looks pretty good I just love the textures on this like you can just see the metal and everything so much better chickens rabbits raccoons I love the new stag uh, the old one was like purple or blue for some reason, and this one, you know, looks better, I think. This is one I don't really like. Uh, this pig just looks too much like a, a swine that you would raise in a pen. It's too pink and everything, like, I don't know. I, I liked the old one with the brown pig with like kind of the fur on the top, like, basically... Oh, well, that's a fell boar. You know, like one of these except smaller, because, I don't know, they did that on Warcraft 2. And this one just doesn't seem to fit, but oh well. And yeah, this is a Felbor. Pretty creepy and like totally mutated from Outland, which is pretty sweet. This is a Dune Worm, which is really gross. Before it had like no detail at all, but now it's like really creepy. So that's pretty well done. Here's the sheep. <laughs> pretty funny. I'm, pr I'm gonna miss the old sheep on Warcraft 3 with that deadpan expression and stuff, but this one's pretty funny too. Oh yeah, and here's the flying sheep. It's funny, it has grass in its mouth still. Must like dive down to eat and then fly back up. The rat looks really good. The rat was like a freaking cone with like a tail before, and so glad to see that it has a lot of detail. Looks good. Here's a penguin that looks really creepy. Um, that's not how penguins stand. They stand with like their flippers at their sides, and it just looks too human for me. I don't know. It's creeping me out. Uh, here's a seal. Looks pretty good. Alright, moving on to the next row here. We got the crabs. Hermit crab looks good. Spider crab looks different now. Before, I think it was just a tiny um, version of the normal crab, but now it just looks like a little cuter and more harmless since it's a critter. Uh, here are the actual... Oh, it's weird because they like go sideways so they face different directions. Anyway, the crabs look really good. Oh, I wanted to check something with that vulture. Is that the player color on its wingtips? Oh, that's weird. I wonder why they do that. None of the other critters have colors, I don't think. This should just be red. That looks weird to have a blue nose and stuff. Okay, anyway. The crabs just look excellent. I mean, the texture of just the bumps and spikes look really good. And that's the behemoth, and it looks really, really good. I think I already looked at the pigs on another one, maybe? But there they are. They're pretty good for the most part with their spikes. Oh yeah, here are the secret StarCraft units. Here's a Zergling. Um, looks really good with those hands and stuff. Before it was basically a Fellhound that looked a little less detailed. Now it's an actual Zergling. Here's a Hydralisk. Uh, I don't know why its spine shooter flaps are always open. I think that might be a glitch or something. Because I think they're only supposed to open when they shoot stuff. But you know, still looks really good. And here's a marine. Looks really good. The uh, Chaos Space Orc apparently isn't done yet because it has the same... Oh, there's my autosave. Um, 
so anyway, the space orc isn't done yet because he has the same model as the uh, marine. So that's all we have to see from them so far. All right, here are the scorpions, or called arachnithids back then. Uh, definitely creepy and weird. Uh, I, they made them look more like snow scorpions with like the ice crystals and the snow fur or whatever. Which I'm a little disappointed about because I liked using them in like desert settings. If you saw my Let's Make a Map series, I used like a one for a desert scorpion boss, but but they look good for the most part. Um, definitely look deadly and stuff. I love the stinger and stuff. They, I've said this before, but I just I just love how they make each one so distinct from each other and how they make the the highest level version of it just looks so much more epic than the lowest version. Also, I don't think I showed this on the other videos, so there's a brood mother. A little too colorful if you ask me, but I don't know. Uh, oh, whoops. Must have put those on twice. Here are wolves. I think I talked about them on the orc episode, so I won't look at them too much. I don't really like them that much. I feel like they're less detailed than the other ones. And I feel like these frost wolves could be wider. They don't look that much different from the timber wolves, so... I don't know. Okay, sorry. Uh, jumping ahead here, my landlord was, like, drilling on the house, and it was super loud, so hopefully he doesn't do it again. Okay, so I was saying about the salamanders. Um, this definitely looks like a hatchling with his little stubby horns and stuff. Um, they're definitely not as red as the salamanders on... The original Warcraft 3, which makes them not really stand out as much as... I don't know, like, just standing next to the um, lightning lizards and stuff, there's definitely, like, a similarity that kind of makes them hard to tell apart. Um, whoa, where's its eye? Is it there? Where is... Oh, that's, that's creepy and weird. Is that its eye? Okay, yeah, I think that's its eye and that's its ear. Anyway, kind of weird. Hmm, maybe there's... I don't know. Wow, that's weird that its eyes past its jawline. Anyway, sorry. So yeah, these are lightning lizards. Their spines look a little bit different as well, but otherwise, yeah, they just kind of look like a bunch of different colors of the same lizards. I guess I should have put a Kodo there for comparison. Where is a riderless Kodo? Oh, that's a fell orc Kodo beast. Here we go. Uh, yeah. It's got kind of two horns, which is interesting, too. Anyway, enough about lizards. Uh, okay, moving on to these here. These are the centaurs. Uh, centaurs have female versions now, which have their own voice lines. It's kind of funny. Um, but pretty cool. I think it's just the archers. Let's see, there's the archer. Drudge is male. This Impaler is female. Okay, these Harpies are getting in the way. <coughs> Bless me. Oh, I'm so glad I'm not streaming this. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you got the pretty cool bow there for the one. Anyway, yeah, it looks like... Oh, the Sorcerer is not... So basically all the ranged centaurs are female, because I think sorcerers shoot like fireballs or something. And then you got the Khan, just straight up Genghis Khan on half horse. Anyway, I like the centaurs. Um, the female centaurs actually have a different voice set, which is pretty cool. So if you look at the uh, normal centaurs, they sound like this. And then the females sound like this. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, there's also female satyr lines, but they're like directly copied. The night elf shall suffer. You caught me. You again? That sort of thing. Anyway, so yeah, those are uh, kind of cool differences. I I wouldn't mind if they kind of threw in other female characters, like female bandits or something. Anyway. Okay, then we got the harpies. 
which look less like they're wearing pajamas like they were in the other one. Um, they definitely have kind of a variety of looks about them. This one looks really cool, the Harpy Queen. Uh, she kind of looks like a like a Gerudo from Ocarina of Time with... Oh man, I, I just looked at their feet. That's really like brutal, nasty talons. Pretty cool. Anyway, uh, next are the Quill Boar. Uh, this one <laughs> looks like a worker or something. Um, but that kind of continues it, you know, it goes from worker all the way up to this crazy Razor Mane Chieftain. It's got the little flag on his back. Um, reminds me of a lot of the Quill, the Razor Manes and Quill Beasts, Quill Boars on uh, World of Warcraft. So definitely got some inspiration from that, I think. Here's Draenei. Not going to spend a whole lot of time on them because I don't like Draenei. I think they're gross. And, uh, I think they're a little less gross now than on the other one. Well, I don't know. I guess just gross in a different way. Anyway, I'm still kind of impressed at like the variety of them. So there's a Draenei Laborer, Guardian, Disciple. They each have kind of a different weapon, which is pretty cool. Most of them are some sort of war pick. This one's got like a hammer, which is pretty cool. And then we have the Harbinger and the Dark Slayer, and then the Seer, which has like the like a scar on his face or something, and then this is a Kama, who looks way different from Warcraft 3, if you remember. He's still got the tentacles or whatever from being a, you know, an actual Draenei or whatever they... Oh, that's interesting, he has human skulls in his uh, basket. I would have thought that he would have had orc skulls. That's weird. Yeah, don't the Draenei like, like they live on Outland, so I don't know how he got human skulls. Anyway, they also have a unique model for the Draenei Demolisher. Before, it was just a catapult or something that was used that used the same orc model, but now they have this kind of interesting ballista-like thing. Here's the Kobolds. Uh, they're definitely the World of Warcraft versions. Um, I think it's a little weird that... Like, I kind of wish that they would change their voices to fit World of Warcraft, because they still sound like pigs or whatever. Now they look a lot more like rats, so anyway. That would be one voice I would not mind them changing. I like him with his cask of gold. He's like a treasure goblin. It's kind of funny. Uh, also, I've never seen a purple cobalt in World of Warcraft, so kind of keeping that tradition. Uh, here are the golems. I'm I'm really impressed with the golems. Uh, the mud golem looks a little silly with his mouth, uh, but overall, I think he looks really cool. Goes up into the rock golem. Crystals are a little bit too epic, but overall, I I think it's fine. Uh, and then the granite golem uh, looks really good. They have the battle golem. These look way different. They looked a lot more like. I don't know, almost like Gundam. I don't know how to explain it, but like they just, it's kind of a silly stand animation. Anyway, uh, it'll be interesting to see how they kind of make these, those statues that are in the dungeon sometime, sometimes, uh, but they, they look really, they've got a cool progression with their face structure, the pauldrons, everything just looks really cool up to the siege golem. Uh, and then this is the Flesh Golem, which is really disturbing. Uh, straight off something from Nox Ramus or whatever. Ugh. Before they were just sort of half-skinned, um, War Golems with some Abomination Flesh, but now def that, that could be like a boss unto itself. It looks horrifying. And then there's also, uh, where did I put the Guardian Golems? Is seriously not? Oh, maybe that was before the map crashed. Okay. The, so there are some new golems that I think haven't been on here before. Maybe they have. Maybe they, I know that they're on a campaign, so maybe I'm just forgetting. But there is the uh, defender golem. Not sure what that is, but it looks really cool. The guardian golem. A little more arcane mixed in. I'm guessing these are like ancient, I don't know, maybe I should have looked at these up before, but yeah, I can't remember what they are, but they look really cool. And then this one I remember is the moss-covered granite golem, and he is from 
uh, one of the Blood Elf missions on Frozen Throne. So it's cool that he has his own model because before he was just a green tinted uh, granite golem. So definitely a lot of unique things in there. Here we have the Wendigos. I think their horns are a bit excessive, personally. <laughs> Same with the Sasquatches, theirs are even worse. They're like down to the ground and then their horns are as tall as they are. Yeah, I think that they're kind of ridiculous. Um, but pretty cool overall. That one's absolutely massive. That may be the ma most, like the biggest creep besides the Siege Golem. Uh, but these, if you remember, used to be just Sasquatches skinned slightly different to have a viney texture. Now they straight up look like those moss creepers or whatever they're called on World of Warcraft that kind of go around the swamp. So kind of cool. Uh, looks like a brand new unit completely, so I really like those. Probably have the same animation skeleton, but they have a look all their own. All right, here's some gnolls. For some reason, I thought that the gnolls didn't have crossbows. I thought that they took the gnolls' crossbows away. Maybe they gave them back. I wonder if they were like... I wonder if people were like, no, I'm going to miss them loading their crossbow with their mouth. I guess they still don't do, they don't do that anymore, but anyway, I guess they have crossbows again, which is pretty cool. Uh, these look basically the same. This one looks a little different. The Null Warden's uh, flail used to be charged with like lightning, and it used to shoot lightning blasts. I don't know if that's included in the attack animation. It doesn't look like it, so that's interesting. Okay, he still has that spell or whatever, but little different there. And then here is the Null Overseer. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this... Something did not save properly. There was also... Let me see if I can find it here. Here they are. Yeah, there's two other ones. There's a Null Warlord. Crud, this makes me wonder if I'm gonna miss any other ones that just didn't save properly. Uh, oh, okay. So that one's the same as the Overseer, but this is Snarlmane the Blood Gorger, who is a boss on one of the Blood Elf missions as well. So it makes me happy that they made some unique units uh, have their own model. Uh, I'm not sure if they're going to do that with more of them in the future. I, I can't even remember how many are on the campaign, but kudos to whichever Blizzard developer invented these sort of custom NPCs, because now they get their own model, which is really neat. Here are the Tuskars. <laughs> I like his little hat. Uh, he's got kind of an ice axe. I think that's the same as before. Um, but they gave each one of these a much more distinct look. He doesn't have the whiskers on his face as much. I don't know, maybe that's a female, who knows. Um, but yeah, I, I never really played with these that much. I'm sure they're on some melee maps and everything, but you don't really see them on the campaign, so don't really remember but I love the way they look what was that is that a book I just realized he has a book made out of a clam that is so funny I wonder if that's the way on the old model I love that and of course the Tuscar chief I love how they're obsessed with fish and stuff uh, polar bears just kind of looking at these because when I looked at the bears on another episode uh, I don't think I showed these specifically maybe I did but yeah I don't like the spray paint down their back I think they could have just had some cool runes painted on them but that's just me this is pretty interesting so in in uh, Reign of Chaos there were Pandaren wandering around Northrend as a joke by Samwise Didier because he's obsessed with pandas uh, but this one, they like eventually changed them to polar furbolgs on Frozen Throne instead of Pandaren. But, and they, they all look really cool. I think I looked at the furbolg, uh, the other furbolgs on the Night Elf level if you haven't seen them. Anyway, oh, there's my autosave again. Uh, th anyway, this is called a primal Pandaren. So I thought that was really interesting that they kept the original model and they just decided to call it a primal Pandaren instead of, you know, the more refined, basically Asian culture Pandaren, like the Pandaren Brewmaster. Here's another creep that I've never really looked at much, the Magnetar. Uh, they're pretty cool, basically half mammoth, half man. Yeah, not much.
much to say with them. Uh, the mammoths look a lot better, and I realize it's because the mammoths on the original Warcraft 3, if you look at them, they don't have trunks, and it's really disturbing. Like, I don't know why they chose not to put trunks on a mammoth, which is kind of its main uh, distinguishing characteristic, but yeah, those double tusks and everything, the blood all over their tusks, looks pretty cool. Here are the unbroken and faceless ones from the Ajal Narub, whatever, the forgotten ones. Um, these aren't that impressive. They're kind of just copies of each other with a slightly different weapon. Like the heads are a little bit different, but they still all kind of have that same tentacle pose and everything. Oh, that's a weird weapon. Interesting. And then this one is huge. Well, maybe he's the biggest. Anyway, this is the faceless one, Deathbringer, which looks like a crazy Cthulhu boss. And here's the fate, the uh, forgotten one, which is nasty beyond all reason. Like that is just disgusting with the eyes looking different directions and teeth and tentacles and horns. And these are the tentacles, which I think are a little too big, personally. I mean, if we take you know this Pandaren for size, yeah, they're massive. So. I personally hope they make the Forgotten One better in the campaign. It is just such a disappointing fight. But we shall see. Uh, let's go to the ships next. Uh, these models weren't quite finished when they released those other videos, and so here we are. Uh, it's interesting. There's... Okay, that's the same. Good to know. Anyway, yeah, here are the human boats. I think that... I don't know if it's just me, but I think that the frigates are so boring. All of them. Like, maybe this one looks good as kind of a haunted ship sort of thing, but like... Like, this looks okay. I guess the Night Elf and Undead are okay, but these are just... Whoops. These are just so boring. I, I was hoping that they'd make them look like the destroyers from Warcraft 2, but... I've never been satisfied with those on either one. The battleship looks pretty good. One thing that kind of weirds me out about the uh, ships on Warcraft 3 as opposed to Warcraft 2 is on Warcraft 2 they shoot cannons sideways. Like the ships like go up and turn sideways and start shooting cannons. I don't know how they did that but it was very distinct. But this one just looks weird to have the ship shooting out of a single cannon in the front. Especially when they have these cannons on the side. So I don't know. I thought that was always weird. And here's the or Ogre Juggernaut, but it doesn't look anything like it should. Like, it should have, like, those weird sails on the side with the markings. I don't know. That that was specifically meant to hail back to Warcraft 2, and they kind of changed it. I don't know. Maybe they'll add the sails on the side. It looks kind of incomplete, but... Yeah, this one's pretty cool. I've always liked this one. This is a cool and dead battleship. Oh, yeah, and here's the Sky Barge. I think I might have already looked at that, but it looks really cool. Looks like the same kind of gem that powers a frost worm, like in its chest, but... And then this is one of the ships that Arthas uses on the Northrend missions, and he ends up, like, destroying them so the men can't go home. Uh, this is pretty good. I think it would be cool if they also had... Actually, this almost looks like a Blood Elf ship, but I was gonna say, there's a scenario later on in the Frozen Throne. In fact, the last few ones of the Undead campaign where the Blood Elf... The Blood Elves have a navy, and I think it would be cool if they also made uh, Blood Elf ships. So, we'll have to see about that. Uh, while we're by the water, here are the Murlocs. Uh, oh, that's a Murgul. A Murgul Cliff Runner, Murgul Bloodgill, and the... I forgot how many of these there are. There's a Tide Warrior with a Shell Shield a snare caster, and then we get a Murgle Marauder with the kind of horned helmet, and then the shadow caster, which looks like all decked out in bone armor and everything. And oh man, did I seriously move? Man, I I swear I had this better prepared. I don't know what they put the Murloc somewhere else. Oh, here they are. Okay, sorry. Okay, here's the Tide Runner, and like I said, it looks a lot like the World of Warcraft one, but they also kind of kept it, I don't know what it is, but it, maybe it's the eye size or something, I don't know, but I think they did a good mix in between. Here's the Murloc Huntsman and the Nightcrawler, and then here are the mutant ones that are disgusting. <laughs> oh, they just made me so freaking nasty. 
just these like pustules on its back and everything and this one looks like it's holding tumors so big it barely can carry them Ugh. anyway murloc mutants are pretty well done uh here's some turtles got everything from the hatchling and you'll notice the shell gets spikier with every time the head looks really cool though uh the biggest one is this dragon turtle and I noticed, interestingly enough, that this dragon turtle, which is the Naga's siege weapon, looks different from that one. So they made its own model and made it look more Naga-ish with its like fins. So an interesting, subtle touch there. I like that. And here are the Murgle huts and the Murloc huts, which are different. Um, I kind of wonder if they will uh, end up making specific buildings for the tutorial campaign because the murlocs have like towers on that campaign and they're just these buildings colored different colors so I thought that was kind of funny uh, where should we go next here's some items I realized I didn't look at those uh, the tombs all have tomes all have different appearances on them that's a tome of intelligence a tome of strength with that symbol on it and a tome of agility I think these runes are kind of bad. Like, they should look more spectral, I guess. Like, it just looks like a floating piece of metal. So that's one thing I don't like much. And the glyph, a little bit surprised that it's not glowing a little bit more, but yeah. Uh, you got the normal treasure chest, lumber, coins. And then this I didn't really like either. This is a shadow orb fragment. His shadow orb's black. It's not purple, so... A little strange about that. This is shimmerweed or tomato plant. <laughs> Thought it was pretty funny. And here's a thunder lizard egg, which not much to say about that. In fact, it looks like kind of incomplete, so I'm not sure if that one's done yet. Uh, this I thought was just interesting because they have actual units for the city buildings now. Before they were doodads, which were you know unselectable, that kind of thing. But I guess they changed the way that they're going to be doing that and. Probably mostly in the uh, the culling level. Here is a dimensional gate for like the dark portal and everything. I always thought that looks really good. Uh, I don't know. Seems like it could use a few more colors or something, but I don't know. Okay, kind of going all over the place, but I can't remember if I looked at these in the Night Elf level, but here are the Corrupted, Poison, and Plague Treants, which I think are amazing, especially the Plague Treant. Could be a sweet boss that you encounter. And here are the Lobstrox. Oh no, they're called Mercuras. Yeah. They pretty much just look like big old lobsters. This one's got more of a shrimp head, which is interesting. Ugh getting kind of creepy crawly there. Is this the biggest one? Yeah, the Tidal Lord. Pretty sweet. I like the claws and everything. The spikes, the player color positioning. Looks really cool. Alright, uh, oh, I forgot to show this. For some reason I moved it all the way over there. Oh, okay, so this was the logical progression. Anyway, these are the Draenei huts. And it's interesting because they definitely hail back to their Draenei origins with like these crystals on top like as opposed to being these whatever they're called lost ones or broken ones or something these look like the actual Draenei from Warcraft uh, World of Warcraft with their crystal you know kind of stained glass sort of thing but they look you know as corrupted as these Draenei do so it's cool that they kind of held back to the the architecture retconned a little bit of that but still kept them different and kind of degraded from their previous form, so that was pretty cool. Um, since I ended up here, let's look at the neutral heroes that I haven't looked at yet. The other ones I've looked at in the other videos that they fit in, such, like for example the Dark Ranger fit in the uh, Undead video, so if you want to look at those. This is the Fire Lord, pretty creepy. Doesn't quite look like Ragnaros. Uh, they kind of made them distinct, so that was pretty nice. Here are the lava spawn, which look way creepier. Before, they kind of looked like just cute little blobs, but not sure why this is the only one flaming. Maybe they're going to fix that later, but yeah, these definitely look just creepy and definitely more lava-ish. I actually want to kind of look at their... Oh yeah, that's their animation where they're about to spit open, like spit up a new lava spawn, so that was kind of cool morph 
That's interesting. I want. Oh yeah, do they do they grow or something? Can't remember. Anyway, that's the lava spawn. Here are the Pandaren Brewmasters. This one's just the one that you'll see on melee maps, and this one is Chen Storm Stout. So I thought they did a pretty good job with that. It follows the tradition that the other races did with making melee ones a little more generic and different and then basing the old Warcraft 3 models on the heroes. So that's what Chen looks like. And he looks a little bit different with browner hair, that sort of thing. These, I'm not sure why there's two different ones. It, I think it might be because Chen has more leveled abilities in the Rexar campaign. I think that's what it is because in the Rexar campaign you have I think four levels for each of your basic abilities and then your ultimate has two levels because you can get to like level 20 or something so I think that Storm Earth and Fire has two different forms for that reason so I think normally you turn into these this one's Earth, Fire and Storm and then this is like the upgraded Earth with like maybe a little bit bigger and he's wearing a hat Actually, you know what? I think these are just Chen's, because the, these ones are brown-skinned, and these ones are black. Okay, that must be it. So he must turn into these, he must turn into these. But he does definitely get more epic ones, so... And each of these could be their own, um, you know, hero unit, or, or even race unit, because they look really distinct. Darn it, I was hoping that the hero glow well, maybe this is just unique to him, but I was hoping that the Hero Glow only, like, was sort of separately added, but I guess we'll find out. Um, okay, I shouldn't have gone all over the place, because now I'm going to get lost. I've looked at all of those. Oh, okay. I haven't looked at these here. So, yeah, yeah. Here's some Dalaran Elementals. This is an Enraged Elemental and a Berserk Elemental. I can't even remember what these looked like on the other Warcraft 3. I think maybe... Did they look like Void... Void Lords or something? I wonder why he has a belly button. <laughs> um, I don't think he was born with an umbilical cord. Anyway, but I think they look pretty cool. They could be used as like Void Walkers or Demons as well. And pretty sweet with the purple color it fits with their being sort of mutated from Dalaran when it was in ruins. Here's a reef elemental and a sea elemental. As far as I know, they look pretty close to the water elementals of the humans. Yeah, tiny bit different. But yeah, they've definitely got like the seaweed and coral armor and stuff. These ones are pretty gross. This is a Dalaran reject. Ugh. Pretty gross. It's kind of wide, which is interesting. I'm not sure why it's wide like that. And these are nasty. So this sludge minion is basically the same look as the ones on Warcraft 3, like the normal one. And then they kind of branch out and make them look different. This one, you know, has got the skull face, nasty bones and stuff. And then this one, the sludge monstrosity, is just gross. Ugh. It's like shiny. It's got all the pustules on the back and arrows in it, all swords, and then that head is just revolting. I don't know what it looks like in different colors. Okay, yeah, it's the spots on it and stuff, but ugh, I thought that was well made for what it represents. <laughs> this one almost resembles the ones on World of Warcraft. I wonder if that was intentional, where they kind of have skulls and stuff. Alright, I hope I don't miss any, like I did with the Banshees on the Undead. I think we're good, though. Yeah, okay, I think we're good there. So now we'll just end with the dragons. Here are the dragon roosts. Uh, and it's interesting how each one kind of is framed differently to reflect the type of dragon. I think they did an excellent job. So this is a green dragon. You got, like, the forest with the mushrooms and stuff. The bronze dragon, you have sand and pillars and, like, a sword up there or whatever. Interesting, he's got, like, kind of a, some furry frills there, which are interesting. The nether drake, the nether dragon roost has, like, these floating platforms, which is sweet. I really like that. Their shark head was kind of interesting that they brought that back. Before. Honestly, the nether dragons on the original Warcraft 3 didn't have much personality, so I'm glad that they branched out in World of Warcraft and brought them back. So, yeah, they look very distinct and alien, I guess, to the other ones. 
in this ice roost we have a blue dragon and then the uh, black dragon with uh, yeah just sort of some corruption here I guess from fell magic and otherwise it just sort of looks like earth also I changed their colors to make them look cooler so that goes with these two like normally I guess these have you know like a black which looks good with the black dragon but like like this this is how it'll look on a melee map I think with the black uh, neutral passive or whatever the player is uh, and then here is the red dragon with like the volcanic look which is really cool um, those eggs look different too from the other ones the other ones kinda have scales but yeah those are sweet okay now here's the actual dragons so the green the whelps look so <laughs> adorable I guess like they definitely look more like whelps before they just looked like tiny oh <laughs> I didn't see the I haven't seen the nether dragon hatchling yet it's adorable with that snake head I mean it's a shark head anyway before the whelps just looked like miniaturized versions of the dragons with uh, I don't know less like fewer features on their face but now they've got that baby face look on it which is kinda cool and then you move up to the drakes uh, the green dragon progression he gets that sort of cone pine cone tail thing uh, overall I really like the green dragon the bronze dragon looks a little different and yeah it has that sort of fur on the side there and like ridges down the back yeah really cool and then the nether drakes just look a lot better before they just kinda looked like they had this nondescript snake head with like a black body but yeah these are really impressive probably shouldn't have put these so close together I'm not a huge fan of the blue dragons. It looks like they've got like ice crystals all over them, but they're like part of their physiology. And I don't know, that just looks a little excessive, especially, I don't know, it, I guess it looks cool, but if you compare Saffron, like the way Saffron looks, see, I don't know. Like they could have done without the spikes and I would have been happy with it, but I don't know. maybe I don't know maybe it'll grow on me and then the black dragons again this is a player color brown I thought it looked better if you do red the actual webbings of the wings change color which I'm not sure how much I like that cuz see it like changes the look of like blue dragons quite a bit if they're like red but I don't know I guess you gotta see from up from when you're selecting your units but yeah the big old black dragon looks really good I hope that Blizzard releases, like, I don't know, just other models for use on campaign levels, like Deathwing, you know? Like, it'd be cool to have an actual official Deathwing uh, model, but I guess we'll see. And the red dragons look really good. And then the dragon spawn. Uh, pretty good, I guess. They're all called blue dragon spawn, but they kind of range from greenish to purplish. This is one of the most interesting weapons I've seen. It's like a quad axe that's like a mace axe thing. So that was kind of cool. And then last of all, unless I'm mistaken, yeah, I think this is last of all, uh, the neutral buildings. So we got the circle of power, which I hope they add more glow around the edges. Uh, just in the middle is kind of boring, but I guess we'll find out. And then they fixed these. And in one of the other videos, I looked at these and it looked like paint, but it looks more like water now, so it's kind of growing on me. I like the fairies that were like floating around it though, so I don't know if they'll add those again. And it's kind of interesting, they made them very different, not just in color, but in kind of makeup, you know, composition. This second one has like two layers or whatever for the fountain of mana. And then this one's, you know, the Fountain of Blood looks different. You know, it's got, like, I thought that, like, before it just used a straight-up Fountain of Mana, I think, and then Manoroth tainted it, but, yeah, there it is with blood. The liquid on here looks really good. Well, it looks more like red wine than blood, but before it was kind of changing back and forth, so you could see what it was, but I'm not sure if it was to do that. And here is the Defiled Fountain of Life, which, again, looks different from that Fountain of Life. So... They, I guess that they just wanted to make sure that they focused 
very specifically on making each thing unique. Um, no more, you know, just changing a color here and there, but they had to actually make each one look very different. So, oh, that changed. Uh, here's the Goblin Laboratory. It looks exactly the same, except it says Kem Temple of Kaboom instead of Temple of Boom. Not sure why they did that, because Temple of Boom was a reference to the Temple of Doom on Indiana Jones. So Kaboom kind of, I don't know, it's a subtle thing, but it kind of changes it. The Waygate looks way different, and I like this, I think, because it's almost like you stand here, and then it does that, like the mass teleport animation is kind of a cylinder or whatever that matches with that pretty well. So I thought that was kind of nice. Looks like the pathing is huge on that. Oh, never mind. That's uh, that's unbuildable. So maybe you do stand. Like maybe your units actually go to the middle and it teleports them. I like that a lot. Tavern looks the same. The mercenary camps look the same. Uh, they are different colors depending on which tile set you're on. But other than that, they don't really change. Actually, I'm just gonna test something. I've been playing Warcraft 2 a lot, and I noticed that they put a lot of work into making the winter tile set uh, buildings covered with snow. So I'm just curious if they possibly... Nope, it's just colored blue. Never mind. This is a marketplace which looks way different. I kinda like the look of it. It looks more neutral. Like It looks like a, a marketplace that was kind of cobbled together piecemeal out in the open instead of like the way that the marketplaces look on um, the original Warcraft 3 where it was like an actual marketplace that was in the middle of a city. This looks more like a you know, a black market out in the middle of nowhere. So, Okay, is that it? Alright, I hope I didn't miss anything. Oh, the Hydras and the Sea Giants. I'm so glad I didn't forget. The Hydras look really good. Uh, very snake-like got that big fan tail uh, and then the bigger they get the more sinister their heads start looking and everything um, and they start growing more horns their horns get huge and then the, the biggest hydra which is this ancient hydra has just those huge curled uh, heads in the middle of that dominant head and yeah just looks really really good I love the hydras and last of all the sea giants um, so I didn't notice this, but on the old, uh, on the original Warcraft 3, I always wondered what those like cape things were like on their backs, and yeah, it's like literal sea creatures that they sort of draped over themselves, which I thought was pretty funny. Uh, that one is like a, obviously like a manta ray or a stingray or something. I could have sworn there was one more sea giant. Am I missing one? Huh, nope. I thought there was one without anything on his head, but I guess not. And then this one has a shark on his head. And I think that's what the original ones in Warcraft 3 had. They had a shark on their head. But I didn't notice. I thought it was just like a cape. But now that we have the details, it's like a shark skin. And then this one, I think, is kind of silly. I mean, it's like a straight-up giant squid that it just sort of draped across its head. Like, I don't know. It doesn't even look like it's fitting properly. I think that was a little bit excessive. It kind of ruins how cool he is, because it just looks kind of ridiculous. But, you know, the armor, like the barnacled armor and everything is really cool, and I love how he uses a freaking anchor as a weapon. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. Okay, I think that's it. If not, I'm sorry. And if it was something big, I will... Oh, there's a Northrend obelisk that doesn't have player colors, which I thought was weird. Because in, in that last level of the Frozen Throne, you kind of got to see which color, like which player owns each obelisk. So, anyway. Anyway, if I missed anything else, I'm sorry, but I don't think I did. That was a lot of creeps to go through. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. I will have one more video out later. It is a video looking at the doodads in the game, or like the little pieces of scenery, because those warrant a lot of attention. They've really upped their game on those, and they look really good. So thanks for watching. I'm excited for Warcraft 3 Reforged. When it comes out, we can look at the campaign a lot closer. But for now, these models were pretty cool to check out. I'll see you later.